thousands of years, apple cider vinegar has been used as a home remedy for everything from healing wounds to soothing stomach aches. But do these home remedies really work? And what does science have to say about all this? Carol Johnson is from ASU's College of Health Solutions. She joins us now to share some of her research on apple cider vinegar. It's, it, it feels like this is a hot topic all of a sudden, but it's been going on for generations. What's going on here? I think, I think the science is catching up. Um, the folklore has been around, as you said, for thousands of years, um, but the research was never applied. The scientific method was never applied. And now it's being applied, and, and we can see clear evidence of benefit. Apple cider vinegar. Is it the apple? Is it the cider? Is it the vinegar? What, what's what's the, the key player here? So vinegar is a fermented food from whatever the vegetable source or the fruit source is. And so it's, it's fermented, and it's the only dietary source of acetic acid. And so that's what makes it so special, is that it... It's the only food we consume that has acetic acid in it. So the fermentation is the big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it could be, it does apple and the cider could be interchangeable with other things? Well, the benefits that we're seeing from vinegar seem to relate mainly to the acetic acid. And so any vinegar, any vinegar, red wine, you know, from grapes or pomegranate wine, vinegar from pomegranates. Yes, yes. It all has the acetic acid. Um, raw, unpasteurized apple cider. I'm seeing that that works best. Well, what do you think about that? I'm seeing benefits from even distilled white vinegar. Wow. And, and that's not to say that these other um, ingredients that are present in the vinegar aren't helpful, but what I'm looking at centers on the acetic acid. Well, let's talk about what you're looking at. I mean, things like helping to lower blood sugar. <laughs> Did you, have you found that this actually works? Yes. Yes. That, so my research now, I've been doing this work for almost 20 years, and my early research was definitely focused on diabetes and lowering blood sugar. And there are quite a few reports over the past 20 years outside of mine, mine and others, who are showing the same benefit. So is it, is it did you drink, did you, how, do you, how do you apply so, it? So the acetic acid is a really interesting molecule. So I, I'm sure you've heard of the gut microbiome. Sure. And you, you consume probiotics and, and mm -hmm. prebiotics to feed the microbe. Well, acetic acid is a postbiotic. The reason you want to feed your microbiome is to produce these chemicals that are known as postbiotics. And the main chemical produced by your gut microbiome is acetic acid. So and, you're and, basically helping the gut along here. Yes, yes. And, and we know all the benefits from the gut microbiome. And so the acetic acid, it, it will benefit quite a few different metabolic pathways. So, and I, it, it, I also hear that it slows digestion, which might help with stomach discomfort. Is that true? Well, there are reports out there showing slowing of gastric emptying. The, there's also reports showing that the acetic acid can inhibit the enzymes that digest your starch. And so that's where the glucose comes from. That's where the blood sugar comes from, is from the breakdown of the starch that you're consuming. Yes. And we know that acetic acid can stop that digestion 20 to 40 percent. Wow. And so what that means is the amount of glucose entering your bloodstream after you eat a big pasta dinner yes. is going to be reduced. And so that helps the, the diabetic or the pre-diabetic manage their blood glucose. Is it reduced if you have the apple cider vinegar before the meal or after the meal? You know, we actually did some research on this. Five hours earlier than the meal does not help and post-meal does not help. You need to get the acetic acid in, into the small intestine before the starch. Wow, isn't that interesting? It is, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Helps to lose weight. Are you buying that? Okay, so that's, a, that's a another metabolic pathway. So re remember, acetic acid enters metabolism in a lot of different places. And we see benefits with glucose uptake in the bloodstream, which is good, but we also see fat oxidation, which is burning of fat. And, and we see that upregulated with the acetic acid. Wow. So in, in rats, you can't do this in humans, but in rats, you can actually inject acetic acid. Yes. And, and they've done that, and, and they've shown increased fat oxidation, which helps manage, you know, lower fat levels. Is, is the overarching thing, though, slowing digestion? Is that like a biggie? Slowing digestion is does seem to be occurring, but that's not the main it's, it's premise the main here thing. at okay. all. Yeah. Okay. It's, it, it's, it's metabolic pathways. It's in, it's in your bloodstream. It's in your tissues. My research has now evolved to the brain. There's this gut-brain yes. interaction. Yes. I, I'm, I, I think people have heard of this, like you feed your microbiome and it helps your brain. Yes. Well, acetic acid is involved in a lot of that. And so we're seeing improvements in depression. Wow. 
Um, one last one here, and this this is the one I, I'm I'm not so sure about this one. Okay. You apply it topically, and it can get rid of everything from acne to eczema, and topically too. Well, all right. So, so again, the science hasn't caught up with everything, and so that, I'm not saying that it's not going to be scientifically proven, but it's an acid, and so it's going to be very harsh uh, to apply to an open okay. wound right. because it is an acid. Yes. And so it could it could kill the organisms, like prevent infection, but it's going to damage tissue too. What are the uh, what, what side effects taking too much? I mean, what, what's going on here? So what we recommend is people dilute a tablespoon or two in a glass of water and drink it at the start of the meal. And so you're first of all, you're diluting it. You're not chugging it, yes. which we don't recommend because it's a strong acid. So you want to dilute it and consume it as you're consuming food. So the food will help that matrix sort of dilute it out a bit and help you, you know, consume it without too much of the irritation from the acid. And it's, there's not like a pill you can take or anything like that. There are pills on there the are, market. Oh, there are. But they don't contain the, an active level of the acetic acid. And so you would have to consume 40 pills at a sitting to get the Holy amount. Smoke. I know, to get now. the amount you would in a tablespoon yeah. of vinegar. Uh, you got about 10 seconds left here. Is there anything else that has this acetic acid? Because that seems to be the key. Is it just apple cider vinegar? It's any vinegar, it doesn't matter which vinegar it is, and most fermented foods like sauerkraut, mustard. Mustard is a great example because if you put mustard on your, on your sandwich, yeah. it will have the same effect as vinegar. All right, we're going to stop right there because I can, I, can, I can buy that one. Uh, great information. Thank you so much for oh, joining us. This is really interesting stuff. Me. It's been you a bet. pleasure.